Well, just as some provinces clamp back down on businesses, the federal government is announcing new supports for business owners. The government announced today it's improving the rent relief program. This one will bypass landlords and directly give hard-hit businesses up to 65% of their rent or mortgage payments. That rises to 90% if they're subject to a shutdown. The government will also freeze the current wage subsidy at 65% until December. And that $40,000 interest-free loan available to businesses, well, there is now an additional $20,000 available, and $10,000 of that is forgivable. For more on the announcement, I'm joined by Minister of Small Business Mary Ng. She joins us from Ottawa today. Welcome back to the program, Minister. Hello there. Very good to be here always. Well, I want to ask you about timing and specifically as it pertains to that rent relief. You know as well as I do, it's the ninth of the month. You need legislation in order to uh, make this happen. The House isn't sitting next week. So will businesses be getting rent relief for the month of October? Well, businesses will be getting rent relief for the month of October. They'll also get it for September. We will be backdating this so that uh, businesses uh, who are eligible will absolutely get that support for September as well. When do you think they can expect to see uh, the, the October money in their hands, Like, given the, the fact that there's still a process to go through? Well, we're going to work as fast as we possibly can. We are going to introduce legislation uh, as quickly as we can. You heard will that you from recall the, the House Prime next Minister. week, may I ask? Next week is a week where we are working with uh, with constituents in each of our ridings. Uh, so uh, so we will do it as soon as we possibly can. OK, so that, that sounds like a note of recalling the House. I do want to ask you, though, more broadly about the way the new program is going to work for people who are outside of uh, what we'll call the red zones. Obviously, you and I both know they have different names in different provinces. But the new rent measure in those cases, if you're not subject to a lockdown, it's less generous, right? 65 percent covered by the government instead of um, businesses would have been receiving a total of 75 percent from governments and landlords before. So what do you say to businesses who will get less help under this new measure? Well, I think that uh, this new program is uh, is a build on the one that we've already had. If you are experiencing a revenue decline of more than 70 percent, you are going to get help of 65 percent. What is in addition uh, here is that if you are experiencing a decline in revenue, but it is less than 70 percent, you will also get uh, the assistance through the rent subsidy. So this is very much listening to businesses, listening to entrepreneurs to make sure that they are getting the support that they need during uh, this very difficult time. And and what they need right now, which is as uh, as the situation for the for the virus changes in different parts of the country, making sure that there is that additional uh, top up support of 25 percent should uh, should your area be subject to a uh, health direction that requires you to, to close. But I, I, you do acknowledge, Minister, that there are businesses that are cumulatively gonna, going to get less rent support through this new program, who would have gotten a, a cumulative total of 75% between the landlord and the government under the new program. They'll get less now, 65%. Well, what I'm saying is that uh, this is a targeted program. I know that there are many businesses who um, who don't need the support, and that is terrific. The program here is there are an awful lot that do, sure though, Minister. I know, I know you know that very well as, as well. Absolutely. I mean, today's program is really about helping uh, businesses. The rent support is one component of a suite of supports. The other is to help businesses deal with keeping people on payroll. The third, of course, is to give businesses that additional liquidity through the interest-free loan account to which we're going to add another 20000 to the loan and 10000 of that is forgivable for those businesses that need it. I'd very much like to talk about um, the, the business account in a moment, but I just want to wrap up some of the conversation around rent. I'd like to understand, acknowledging, as you just did a minute ago, that in some cases um, there are businesses that are going to get less help. I wonder if you still hope that landlords will step up in those cases. Is there some expectation on the part of the government that landlords will forego some portion of, of their rent uh, with the new program in place? I think that uh, that we have seen throughout COVID-19 a real Team Canada approach. And certainly many businesses have been able to work out with their landlords uh, an arrangement that works for them. What this is, is uh, the rent subsidy program will help those businesses who need it. An additional 25% for those that uh, are subject to health direction measures that, uh, that, that, uh, that they're going to need. Uh, but of course, I mean, uh, any 
any opportunity where uh, where a landlord and a tenant, a small business tenant can work together, I think uh, meets a mutually beneficial objective, which is that they are working together so that those businesses do get supported and, they're, and that they're, they're, they're viable. But you're but saying I it would be nice say, rather than saying we expect you to step up. Is that right? The rent subsidy program as uh, as it will be put forward is going to help many many more businesses and uh, in addition to those businesses uh, 130,000 of them that have been helped under the previous program that actually helped over 1.2 jobs get supported because of rent assistance so uh, the rent subsidy program the one that we're launching now um, continues to help businesses uh, be supported through this very difficult time of COVID-19. I mean, you do talk about all the businesses, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, Minister, but you talk about all the businesses that were helped, but um, you, you know very well that, you know, a fraction of the budget of this program was used under the previous program. According to the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses, 47% of small business tenants needed rent relief and they were unable to access it. So I wonder, do you agree that this new program um, is an acknowledgement that it just really wasn't working well enough the way it was before? What I acknowledge is that over a million jobs were supported and helped and 130,000 businesses were helped with rent support. We've always said that we would listen to businesses, we would always do more, and that's what this is. This is making sure that through this very difficult time and today uh, as COVID-19 changes and will change, it's making sure that we have those supports in place for those businesses and entrepreneurs who absolutely need it. We want to see biz businesses bridge through this period because um, getting them to the other side of COVID-19 is absolutely this government's objective. I, I want to uh, play for you a clip of one small business owner that I spoke to. Uh, I asked him about the measures today. He gave you guys a B minus. <laughs> he said he's generally happy with what he heard today. But his concern is he hasn't been able to access rent relief in the last six months. So I'd like you to listen to what Jeff Clark has to say. Honestly, we've paid rent for the past six months. That expense never went away for a lot of small businesses. Um, you know, we've, we've had to take out, you know, loans, you know, many um, businesses, you know, had, had to take out loans personally. Uh, to to pay for things like rent because the landlords decided not to participate um, completely you know beyond our control um, you have a program you have the money budgeted for it let's let's use that now uh, Minister Freeland seems to say today at, at today's news conference that there wasn't going to be retroactive help so how do you explain that to somebody like Jeff Clark I would say to Jeff that, um, that as I say to uh, many, many businesses, right from the very beginning, our commitment is to support you through this so that you can uh, bridge through this very difficult time of COVID-19. And now into, uh, into this second wave, we're going to continue to do that, helping you with rent support, helping with payroll, helping with uh, some uh, with uh, lending support through SEBA. Okay, I have to. I, I did say I was going to ask you about SEBA, about the business accounts. So just quickly before I let you go, I'm sure you know very well that the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses has said when it comes to the business accounts, they're still very concerned about all the businesses that haven't been able to access the program. Uh, they point to people with personal bank accounts, new firms, those uh, facing restrictive rules for non-deferrable expenses. Will that be addressed in this new legislation? Well, there is no legislation for yeah, sorry. For, there, there's no legislation for SEVA. Uh, it's an additional twenty thousand dollars for those businesses who need it. Uh, I want to uh, I want to be very clear about that. Uh, for those businesses who continue to need this liquidity support, absolutely. For those with business accounts, I want to assure you we are working very hard with the over two hundred uh, financial institutions who offer SEVA to find a solution for you. It's very important that we we do that, and that work continues. Um, and we're, you know, we continue to make sure that that happens uh, as quickly as we can. And for can you those promise that it'll get fixed, Minister? I, I understand it's complicated. The, are you in a position to promise that you will fix the issue? Absolutely. You promise? Yes, okay. absolutely. I mean, our commitment has always been to make sure that businesses get access to this incredibly important support uh, to give them the working capital that is needed. Um, so, and uh, we've been clear uh, for those businesses that have already um, 
get taken advantage of SIBA. I mean, a $20,000 payroll th threshold, as well as the non-deferrable expenses. And we're working very hard to make sure that uh, that those issues are getting resolved and, you know, through a call center. And they are. I mean, uh, I was just given an update and, and it's moving in the right direction, which is more uh, businesses getting the answers that they need and getting access to SIBA. And, uh, and this will continue. Okay. Well, uh, a lot of business is counting on you. We thank you for taking the time today to explain it to us. Well, and I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving uh, to you and uh, your family and uh, to all the businesses out there. Uh, it's a little different of a Thanksgiving this year, but let's, uh, let's keep working together. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.